Fish love boobies so much that many fishermen would like to see this fly banned. We'll start this pattern with some fluorescent yellow thread. Secure it tightly to your hook shank and snip the excess free. We will then continue wrapping into the bend of our hook. Once complete, we'll grab some chartreuse marabou, measure it to be about the size of our hook shank, and secure it to the back of the fly. Take further securing wraps up the fly, folding the marabou over, wrapping our thread to the head of the fly. Fold your marabou back over and secure it tightly in place. This will not only help further secure our marabou, but also build up a body. Snip the excess free, using your thread to cover any remaining marabou. Next, we will grab some chartreuse brassy wire. Secure this to the hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Return your thread to the head of the fly and grab some pearl mylar. Once again, securing it tightly to our hook shank and wrapping back towards the tail. We will then use our thread to build up a uniformed body, finishing at the head of the fly. Next, grab your mylar and start wrapping it in closed spirals up the fly, continuing to do so until we reach our thread. at which point we will secure, taking several thread wraps over our mylar and snipping the excess free. We will then grab our chartreuse brassy wire and start to wrap this up in open spirals towards the head of our fly. Try to maintain an even distance between each wrap. Secure and helicopter the excess free. In order to add some shine and durability, we will paint over our body with some UV resin, securing it with a UV light once happy. We will now grab some black marabou, measure this to equal the length of our tail, securing it in place just behind the eye of our hook, leaving a bit of room for our next step. We will snip the excess free and lay down a thread base in order to hold our boobies in place. Grab some round booby eyes, here I'm using chartreuse, and secure these to the head of the fly by using your thread to wrap tightly in figure eight patterns. With the boobies secured in place, we will use our whip finisher, taking several turns to prevent the fly from falling apart. Seat the knot tightly and snip free. If you want to read more about the controversy of the booby fly, you can check out the comments below. And if you'd like to win it, comment hashtag flies for your chance to win. This is the fly pattern that you never knew you needed. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snip the excess free. Continue wrapping, laying down a thread base for our next steps. Whip finish and snip your thread free. Grab some brown, yellow, and tan foam, as well as a pen cap. Use the pen cap to mark out your foam and cut out the shape that it leaves indented, giving us a round patty. Add some super glue over the thread base and place your patty on the underside of the hook. Add some pressure to seat it in place, topping it off with some more super glue. We'll then place down a brown patty on top of the bun and sandwich between the hook. Give it a squeeze to secure. We'll then add some more super glue cut out a square of our yellow foam, placing this above the patty. Give it a squeeze and select a green feather. Add a drop of super glue and place a small amount of the feather carefully in the middle, adding a bit more as needed. Secure by adding another drop of super glue and placing a patty over top. Give everything a squeeze to secure it, trimming up the lettuce until you're happy with the results. Add a little more super glue, as well as another tan patty. Give the whole pattern a squeeze, and use your scissors to carefully round over the top. And this is the cheeseburger fly pattern. Yes, I've caught fish on this, but I typically use it as an indicator for brook trout. This ant pattern looks so realistic, you won't be able to tell the difference. To start this pattern, we'll grab some black vivas thread and secure it to the head of our fly, snapping the excess free. We'll then create a small buildup of thread just behind the eye of our hook, whip finishing when complete, and snipping the thread free. 
We'll then grab some UV resin. This is my favorite, you can find it in the link below. We'll add a small drop of UV resin, spread it around our thread base, which gives it a nice black color, and once happy, fix with a UV light. To build up a little more bulk, we will add one more drop of UV resin, securing it with our UV light. With this complete, we'll remove our hook and add a piece of 15 pound monofilament. Here we'll switch our thread out to an ultra thread 140 in black. Secure it carefully to the monofilament. You don't want to use a lot of pressure here or it'll slip off. We will then begin building up a thread base much larger than the head we just completed, as this section will be the ant's gaster. Once complete whip finish, seat your thread and snip the excess free. We'll remove the monofilament from the vise, snipping off the extra monofilament. Reverse the direction, placing it back in the vise, and paint it over with some bone dry UV resin. Fix with the UV light, and then grab some thick UV resin and spread that over our gaster. Once happy, we'll fix with the UV light, remove it from the vise, and reinsert our hook. We will now switch back to our Vivas thread, secure it tightly to the hook shank, snapping the excess free. Continue back slightly into the bend of our hook, securing our extended body gaster to the hook shank. Continue wrapping tightly towards the head of the fly. Once complete, snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some extra small wire, here I'm using black, and secure six legs to our abdomen. With the legs fixed in place, we will whip finish and snip our thread free. Grab a pair of tweezers and bend these legs to give them a more realistic look. Snip them to length and add one more drop of UV resin to the abdomen of our ant. Secure once happy with the UV light, building up some bulk by adding a little bit more. Next, we will add a drop of UV resin to the head and use this to fix two antennas to our ant. Once happy, we'll secure them with the UV light. And this is a realistic ant pattern. Although fish will eat it, it's more of an art project and I'll show you a more practical version in the next video. Today, we'll be creating a realistic squid using feathers. To start, we'll attach some pink thread to our hook shank, secure it tightly, and snip the excess free. Continue wrapping to the back of the hook shank and grab some pink marabou. We'll measure that to be just shorter than our hook shank and secure it tightly. Fold your marabou over and wrap towards the hook eye, folding the marabou back over, securing, and snipping the excess free. This will help build up a little bit of bulk that will be important later in the pattern. Secure to the hook shank and grab some pink squirmy worm material. Measure it to length, about two hook shanks, and secure it tightly. Snip the excess free, and repeat this process on the other side. We'll then set those aside, grab some pink crystal flash, using your fingers to pick it out to give it a little bit of size variation. Secure it loosely to one side and rotate it around the hook shank. Secure the other side, doing the same. Continue to secure back towards the marabou, trimming up the crystal flash to your liking. My goal is to keep it a bit longer in the marabou. We'll then grab a pink ostrich hurl. Grab a clump of about eight fibers, secure it to one side, once again twisting it around the hook shank. And we'll do the same with the other side. Secure, folding over the ostrich hurl, wrapping our thread forward, and then securing the ostrich hurl to the top of the hook shank. With that complete, snip the excess free, secure, and grab some eyes. Here we're using 10 millimeter living eyes in the color fire. You can find all the materials needed to tie this pattern in the link below. I've simply glued them onto some monofilament so they hang back past the hook shank slightly. Once complete, snip the excess free. We'll then grab some pink estaz, strip away the tips, and secure it to the back of our fly and begin wrapping your estaz forward in open spirals. Once you reach your thread, secure tightly and snip the excess free. Clean up the head a little bit and grab a minnow body. This one's in pearl. Slide it over the top of our fly and secure it with our thread. Once it's secure, snip off the needed length, whip finish, and snip your thread free. 
We'll follow this up with a little bit of head cement to ensure that it stays in place. Take your thread and re-secure it just in front of the eye and behind the estaz. Snip the excess free, sliding the minnow body backwards towards our thread. This will create the hood. Secure loosely at first to ensure you get the shape you're looking for and continue to wrap tighter and tighter. Carefully trim off any excess and secure everything in place by whip finishing. Snip your thread free and paint over the hood with some UV resin. This will take several coats to get a nice smooth finish, so take your time with this, adding a little bit at a time and fixing it in between with a UV light. With the hood finished, we'll grab some Sharpies to add some pigmentation. Here I'm using blue, red, and purple. Simply add some dots over the hood in each specific color in order to give it a little bit of variation. Once complete, we'll give it one last coat of bone dry UV resin and secure with a UV light. And this is a realistic squid. This is more of a fun artistic tie, but would make for a great pattern for salt water. However, I would swap out some of the material. Today, we're gonna create a realistic looking mosquito. We'll start off by grabbing some Ultra Thread 140. Here I'm using red. We'll attach our thread to our hook shank and lay down a thread base that we'll use in our next step. Cut the excess thread free. We will now wrap back on our thread base, building up a large thread dam. Once complete, we can whip finish and snip the excess free. Grab some UV resin and paint this over our thread dam. This is gonna emphasize the red color and give it a nice bulbous shape. Once happy, we can fix in place with a UV light and select some black thread. Here I'm using a Vivas in size 16 hot. Reattach our thread to the hook shank just in front of the buildup of thread we just created. Secure tightly and snap the excess free. We will then grab some gray UV dubbing, creating a dubbing noodle and wrapping a small section just in front of our thread dam. Next, we can grab a grizzly rooster cape. We'll select two feathers and put them into a V position. We will tie this just in front of the small section of dubbing we just created. Secure it tightly and snip the excess free. Trim up any feathers you don't like and grab some small copper wire. Secure the brass wire to the side of our mosquito. Snip the excess free and do the same to the other side. We will add one more section of brass wire to the front. This will create a total of six legs. We will then grab more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and fill in our body, taking care not to trap our brass wire in the process. Once we finish dubbing, we're gonna add a set of eyes. Here I've used a small piece of yellow mono, burning it on either side to create an eye that looks much like an insect. Secure this eye tightly to the back of our fly, and add a bit more dubbing to fill it in. Once complete, we can grab our whip finisher, secure our thread, and snip it free. We will then move on to the legs. To get the proper shape, we will use a pair of tweezers, crimping the legs to look like mosquitoes, continuing this process until we have finished all six legs. This fly will catch fish, but is not gonna be very durable, and therefore, this is more of an art project than something used to catch fish. But I wanted to do something special for our 50,000 subscriber giveaway, and I hope whoever wins gets to enjoy it. Today, we're gonna be creating a cased caddis. We'll start off with some Vivas thread, this is 12 aught in black. Attach that to our hook shank, snapping the excess free. We'll then insert a lead-free wire into our bead to help fix it in place. Secure it tightly to the hook shank and helicopter free. We will then build up a thread dam just behind our lead-free wire and create a thread base wrapping into the bend of our hook. Return the thread to the head of your fly and whip finish, cutting the thread free. We're gonna grab some five minute epoxy. Now I like to use this JB Weld in clear. Mix it together and then paint it over the body of our fly, leaving a bit of room towards the head. Once we're happy with our epoxy, we're gonna grab some rocks and sprinkle them onto the top of the epoxy. We'll repeat this process until the body is completely covered or cased in these rocks. Then set it aside and let the resin fix. Once the resin is fixed in place, we will reattach our thread to the head of the fly and snap the excess free. Grab some olive hairs ear dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and wrap this right along the rock casing that we just created, making sure to leave some room at the head of the fly for our next steps. 
Once happy, we'll grab our dubbing brush, brush this free, giving it a nice buggy look, and grab a turkey tail. We'll select about six to eight fibers and measure them out to reach our hook point. Transfer the measurement and secure the turkey tail in place, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. To give them a better look, we'll grab a pair of tweezers and push these back up against our bead. If done properly, it'll make these turkey tails look a little more like legs. Grab some more olive dubbing and use that to finish the head of the fly, pushing our legs back as well. Whip finish, snip our thread free, and brush it out to give it a buggy look. And that is the rock cased caddis. This fly sinks like a rock and fish love it. If you're not using this pattern, you're missing out. Start this pattern with some white vivas thread, grabbing some 0.025 lead free wire. Insert this into our bead, secure tightly, wrapping back towards the hook bend. Helicopter the excess free, and continue to the bend of the hook. Next, we'll create some eyes using some monofilament and a lighter. Alternatively, you can pick up some eyes that are pre-made in the links below. Once complete, you can paint and coat your eyes with some UV resin. We'll secure both eyes tightly to the back of our fly. Snip the excess furry, secure, and grab some crystal flash. Here I'm using pearl. Secure a single strand to the hook shank folding it over and wrapping towards the bend of the hook. Once complete, snip to length and grab a mallard flank. I like to use my scraps for this pattern. Pinch the mallard flank in your fingers and secure it to the back of the fly. Pull it to length and secure tightly, snipping the excess furry. Secure any tag ends and grab some loco legs. Here I'm using tan. We'll take a single strand, double it over, and form a knot. Measure it to length and secure it tightly to your hook shank, wrapping back towards the eyes. Once complete, snip off any excess and grab another leg. Secure tightly as before, wrapping back towards the eyes. Once again, snipping off any excess. We'll then grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Secure it to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards the hook. Once complete, we'll grab some thin skin. Here I'm using clear. Secure this to the underside of our fly, wrapping it back towards the eyes. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a blend of reddish brown hair's ear, as well as some copper ice dubbing. Blend these together, form a dubbing noodle, and use this to create a body. Once complete, we'll brush it out, giving it a nice buggy look. Fold over your thin skin, secure tightly, snipping the excess free. We'll grab our wire and start to wrap it towards the head of the fly, being careful not to trap any of the fibers underneath. We'll secure it, taking wraps both behind, as well as in front of the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. Use a tan permanent marker to color in your thread and whip finish to hold everything in place. This mouse has a secret that most people don't know about. To start this pattern, we'll grab some black UTC, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snipping the excess free. We'll then continue wrapping into the bend of our hook and grab a small black zonker strip. We'll use this to create a tail. Remove some of the fibers, leaving just a tip and secure it tightly to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and grab some two millimeter foam. Here I'm using black. We'll cut the tips at an angle to create a tie-in point, securing it to the hook shank and wrapping back towards the tail. With the foam secured tightly in place, we will grab a zonker strip, this time in size medium, securing it tightly to the back of the fly and wrapping our thread to the hook eye. We will then begin wrapping our zonker strip forward. We'll do so in closed spirals, brushing the fibers back as we go. Continue doing so until we reach our thread. Then you can take several securing wraps both in front as well as behind our zonker strip and snip the excess free. 
Next, we'll grab a brush and brush out our fibers on either side. We want to create a small gap in the middle in order to fold our foam over it. Fold over your foam and secure it tightly with your thread. To create a head to help push water, we will grab the top of our foam, folding it over in order to create a small loop, and once again secure with our thread, snipping the excess free once complete. We will now grab this special strip of foam. This strip holds a secret that makes this fly ideal for nighttime fishing. Secure the foam strip just behind the head of the fly, making sure that it angles up. Snip the excess free, whip finishing to hold everything in place. And this is one of my favorite mouse patterns for fishing at night. It's simple to tie, lightweight enough to cast with a five weight. Additionally, it glows in the dark. If you would like to use this fly or any others, you can purchase them on my website. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be creating a dragonfly out of this foam. To start, I like to use this poor man's tube vise by taking this cap out of an adhesive bottle and securing it to the vise. Cut a quarter inch section of your blue foam and slide it over the needle. This solution isn't the best fix, but it does the trick. We'll then grab some black thread, secure it over the foam and cinch it down tightly. We'll then take several thread wraps to make a segmentation and whip finish to hold it in place. The first few whip finishes will be a little bit of a struggle to keep the foam out of the way, but you can just use your fingers to rotate it around. Seat the knot tightly and snip the excess free. We'll continue this process, creating another segmentation every quarter inch, continuing to do so until we reach the edge of our needle. Once complete, we'll slide it off the needle and if you've done it tight enough, everything should hold together nicely. Here I'm using a size 10 terrestrial hook and secure some white thread to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards the bend. Snip your excess furry and continue wrapping until you reach the hook point. We'll then grab some dubbing. I like to use this ice dubbing in blue done and begin wrapping this up the hook shank and close touching spirals. This is gonna create a base for the next steps. We'll then add our extended tail to the back of the fly and secure it tightly with our thread. The dubbing will keep it from spinning in circles. Fold the excess backwards and secure, wrapping the thread on top of it. Add a bit more dubbing and wrap it slightly up the body. We'll fold our foam back over and secure it tightly to add another segmentation. Secure tightly and repeat the process of folding it backwards, securing and adding a bit more dubbing, and dub backwards until we reach the foam. At which point, we'll create the wings. Here I've selected a cool material, it's called web wings. Here, we're using the molted medium done. We'll cut these out to resemble a dragonfly's wing and secure them to the top of the fly. We'll carefully secure each wing individually. This can be tricky and take your time to make sure that the wing is oriented in the proper position. We'll have the back ones facing out towards hook shank slightly, securing them both tightly and grabbing some more dubbing to help position them in place. Feel free to do this as many times as you'd like to make sure you're happy with their orientation. Next, we'll simply repeat this process, this time with the wings facing forward and creating another dubbing noodle to cover our thread and help position the wings, finishing just behind the hook eye. Once we're happy with our wings, we'll fold over the blue foam and secure it tightly. Whip finish to hold everything in place, snip your thread free, and trim the foam in a rounded shape. And of course, brush it out to give it a nice, buggy look. And this is a blue damsel dragonfly. This pattern requires a lot of work, but is very fun to have in your fly box. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.